So now, uh, a lot of people are wondering exactly what the society is. It seems very mysterious, so here's a brief history for it right now. Uh, if you go onto our wiki page, uh, which is also, we have the information on Facebook and Twitter, but the wiki is quite expensive, you actually see all of the uh, text that we've written down, the spaces that we filled in the gaps, and uh, by the end of this we actually hope to be adding a, a little bit more to the book itself, so we'll be co-opting a second edition, so there's very much a sense of professionalism. But as far as the history goes, back in the 17th century, James Harrington wrote the Commonwealth of Oceania. Uh, while there is no actual specific text to the society itself, there remains enough evidence that this text primarily is what the society drew its influence from. So for us, to bring it into the 21st century, we use everybody that uh, has an act for history and whatnot, and we filled in the gaps. If anybody else is interested, please let us know. But uh, pretty much <coughs> where we leave off right now is in a transitional government. Uh, for how it's written, in 1975 is when the last king, who was called Kirvin, he was the last reigning ruler. He was ousted by a public outcry, and uh, the situation in Oceania at the time was very dire. We mirrored it to kind of go over what's going on in the world now. The economic policies weren't working, there was a lot of unemployment, a very oppressive government. Uh, pretty much every single state newspaper was run essentially through the state, so it was very oppressive. It was not something that was done by the people for the citizens, so that's when there was a breakout in the late thousands. King was ousted. Nobody knows where he went. Maybe he left the country, maybe he's in hiding. For those of you that have a political platform that might actually favor a monarchy, we'll see if you bring it up to voice. But as of now, we have a transitional government. Nobody's been elected yet, so if you're interested in taking part, you're here at a good time. Or, if you just want to sit back and act as a citizen, you can do that too. But right now, we pretty much have it set up where the history of the tyranny is ended, and we're trying to build a democracy here and have a center of the public where it's one person having their vote, speaking in a group. Pretty much all these uh, ideas that in, in liberal democracies here in the West, like that we all share with, it primarily is our focus. But it's it's a parliament. If you uh, have many differing opinions, bring them forward. It will be heard, and we get to debate them. So. This is a map of Oceana. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the places that they are. Um, I created this map mostly, actually almost all of it, simply by reading through Harrington. He has a short chapter on the description of Oceana. Um, it's very, very much based on British history. It's almost like he changes the names and a few other things and adds on his own racist terribly, terribly obnoxious and um, just generally quite horrible um, view of history. Um, but uh, yeah, so Oceania is the largest, most populous area of the country. It's centered around the Clutha and the Halcyone River Valley um, with Emporium, which is the old royal capital, um, which, which thing is now the, our capital is now the, the populous um, people's capital, the Shu on the west coast. Um, the other countries in uh, Oceania are Marpesia, which is very much like Scotland. Uh, highlands, lakes, mountains, etc. Um, um, Panopia is Ireland. Um, it's pretty much more, it's pretty much exactly what Ireland is kind of like, except they've changed the shape. Um, Harrington is particularly disparaging of the Irish. He says that they are a slothful people um, from a soft land, and really that we should kill everybody and replace them with Jews. So, um, so you see what I mean when I mean he's racist and bigoted. Um, nonetheless, Sinopia is Wales. Uh, Harrington doesn't actually mention it. I added it in simply because I thought Wales deserved a little bit of say. I hope he always forgets Wales. I'm not Welsh. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just um, uh, but he does also say that Oceania is uh, a sum of four parts, and I'm not really, I, I spent a long time figuring out what he meant by that, but I decided he means four different states to give me the license to make sense. Um, there's other countries which are not part of the, um, of the Commonwealth of the Republic, which is Veneta, which is up in the top right hand corner. That is 
uh, inspiration taken from, he compares Oceania to a number of existing states at the time in the 17th century. So Venice, which is a major sea power, um, is compared, you know, Oceania's sea power to Venice. So I added Veneta as an exa uh, example of an Italian state. Uh, Neustria, if you any do history, you know that Neustria was an old French kingdom. He uses that as a byword for France um, and French people. So I put that in just sort of similar to what it be with the UK. There's two other countries which are uh, Teutonia, which is obviously Germany. Um, the Teutons are supposed to be a people that settled Oceania, obviously the Anglo-Saxons. Scandia is his byword for the Vikings but it represents a Scandinavian nation. We put in the neighboring countries so that uh, Oceania has a foreign policy. They have uh, fi other fictitious countries to form their foreign policy against. We kind of had a policy of, to follow um, Harrington's example and have it reflect reality, but not actually include Oceania in the real world. Um, to an extent. Th yeah, to an extent. Um, we intend to have real-world politics sometimes affect Oceania, but we will use, we'll do it through the neighboring countries rather than, you know, if you understand. There's one other thing, you might just, yeah. There's one more thing, which is the Isla de Fuego. Um, this is a, this is just a little bit thing. It's a, if you see here, this is a fault line. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you think I spelled Benita, Ocean, and Marquisio right? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're real countries. Um, no, I will change it then so Fuego is spelled right. Sorry, this is 10 minutes. Um, but it's a fault line, east of the Fuego. This is kind of Spanish for an island of fire. I'm not entirely good at Spanish. Um, but it's a volcanic area, um, so it will represent sort of Iceland. So the next time that Iceland rots, it's the Fuego of the Rot and all our airlines will be fucked. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's all. Um, uh, let's say on the geography of Oceania.